Adnan Syed is home tonight, but he is not home free. He's waiting to hear whether prosecutors in Baltimore will prosecute him again for the murder of his one-time girlfriend, Hay Min Lee, 23 years ago. And there he is having leftovers for his first meal out of jail. If all of this sounds very familiar, it's a case that prompted more than 300 million downloads of the true crime podcast, Serial. I'm joined now by Colin Miller, a law professor at the University of South Carolina and co-host of his own podcast called Undisclosed, which tracked this case. And Luke Brindle Kim is a partner and general counsel for a private investigations firm that examined the case for HBO and now works for Syed's defense team. Welcome to both of you. Luke, you know, since you were working uh, with the defense, I want to ask you right off the bat. Um, I, I mean, what was it like yesterday? This just was such a, a remarkable development. Thank you for having me. Um, it was an astonishing evening. Keep in mind, um, Adnan has been incarcerated since he was 17 years old. Um, and to see him back home in the with his family, the hugging, the celebrating, um, it was one of those incredibly moving moments where in my line of work, we often um, wish we could have a result like this where we're able to uh, help justice be served and, and in this case we were able to yesterday so a lot of elation so, uh, this is this is getting personal but were you there like were you able to actually speak with him personally i did get to spend some time with him yes and and can you divulge what what you talked about and what he said i'll i'll respect privacy but i'll say that um he was very grateful to be home with family with people who love him uh and it was a very touching and moving moment. I can imagine. And of course, as a journalist, I would press you even further, but I fully respect what um, what you're saying about just the, you know, the privacy uh, matters. Colin, your podcast, arguably, uh, which was, you know, which was basically the follow up to the to the serial podcast and really started digging into the legal aspects of all of this. And I think, you know, we, we could really say got the gears turning towards the result that, that happened yesterday. Were you surprised anyway when you actually saw it happen? I wasn't surprised about the judge's ruling yesterday. The big surprise was last week when we all heard the prosecution and defense filed a joint motion to vacate this, both sides saying there's not integrity in this conviction. And so to hear the same office that prosecuted it on all those years ago now coming in and saying we don't stand by that conviction anymore, that's pretty powerful. Yeah, it's almost like I had to reread it. Um, you don't usually see the prosecutors coming in and asking for the, you know, a, a, a conviction to be vacated. It's usually the other side arguing for their, you know, their client. But you know, it, the whole story is just nuts when you when you look at it, especially in hindsight and from thirty thousand feet. But Luke, how did they get the conviction in the first place? I cover court. It is hard to get a conviction. People like Jody Arias, you know, they struggle over the death penalty with her and they decide against it. You know, uh, people like Casey Anthony, they, they get away. I mean, they, they get not guilty verdicts. How did he get a guilty verdict? Well, in this instance, it's quite frankly a wrongful conviction. Um, and we see in in his case and unfortunately we see it all too often many of the telltale signs and what do i mean by a wrongful conviction i mean evidence that the trial was simply not fair um and in almost half of all exonerations around the country um it's the startling fact that when prosecutors fail to disclose evidence of innocence um that's actually one of the leading causes of wrongful convictions in this country. Um, and so in this instance, um, we had a, a massive failure to to share with the defense uh, evidence that pointed towards alternate suspects. Um, instead, we had uh, the testimony of uh, a young man, a very impressionable young man um, that was, as Colin knows very well, uh, a very disjointed and very incoherent uh, timeline of events that only frayed as time uh, elapsed. Um, we had junk science, which is another hallmark of a wrongful conviction. Uh, when you alluded to earlier in the intro about uh, cell phone towers and the unreliability 
of uh, certain calls in terms of pinpointing someone's location. Um, we had uh, coercive police tactics. We had misconduct by police officers. Um, so all of these things um, were present in Adnan's case. And uh, unfortunately, um, he never received a fair trial. So call it as a, as a professor of law, but also somebody who is just so entrenched in this particular case because of your, your podcast. Um, do you think that Adnan would would still be where he, I mean, just behind bars with zero attention and no efforts from the legal community to come to his, I mean, listen, there are so many people, right? The Innocence Project can only do so many. Do you think he would still be there if it weren't for these podcasts and the tremendous following? And then as a follow-up to that, I want you to include this answer. Is he going to get retried? It seems preposterous. He would not be home today without one person, and that's Rabia Chowdhury. She brought the case to Sarah Koenig for the Serial Podcast. She started our podcast, Undisclosed. She got the HBO series made, and she and her fight over these decades is the reason that he is home. And then in terms of whether he's going to be retried, there's some further DNA testing, and that's the only way he would be retried is if somehow that was a match for him. That's not going to happen. And so case is not going to go back to trial unless one of these new suspects or someone else, there's enough evidence for the prosecution to take that person to trial for the murder. But none is not going to be back in court for this. Yeah, I would think it would be absurd uh, if they, especially, you know, this many years later, it is so hard to prosecute a case that's contemporary, let alone a case that's decades old, you know, memories fade, people die, evidence disappears, and it's just harder and harder. So, Luke, to, to that um, notion, Sarah Koenig's uh, podcast, of course, Serial was just so remarkable, 300 million downloads, it's the highest downloaded podcast of all time, I think was at one point anyway. Um, and she released her first new episode of the podcast in eight years. Um, says she knows who the suspects actually are. I just want to play a quick uh, clip from it. Have a listen. One of them was investigated at the time, submitted to a couple of polygraphs. The other was investigated also, but not with much vigor as far as I can tell. He's now in prison for sexual assault. But no one has charged either of these guys in connection with Heyman Lee's murder. So I'm not going to name them either. So, Luke, we're not going to either, and I don't want you to either. It's not right to do that for people who aren't charged. But um, what do we know about these two people? And not only that, uh, do we have motive that they might have had? Well, thank you for not forcing me to identify uh, the alternate suspects. I think, look, it doesn't matter that, that I know who they are. It's not my place to identify them. Um, the that will happen another day. Um, but what's important here is that the state knows who they are and the state has known who they are for 23 years. Um, the bombshell uh, in this case was uh, doc documents within the prosecutor's own file that laid out in some detail uh, reasons uh, why Adnan was not guilty and in fact, pointed the finger um, very firmly in a different direction. Um, so that's the key fact here. I do want to also state that this has been a case um, that has had tremendous uh, attention and um, there have been many important champions for Adnan. I do think uh, it's important to note that the current counsel, Erica Suter, has um, valiantly reinvestigated um, the new aspects of this case uh, and combined with all of the support from the entire community uh, that has been supporting Adnan, um, we're in this place where we are today. It's just astounding, so unbelievable. I, I, I have to say, hearing about the hearing yesterday, I thought, well, they won't make a decision right then and there. And they did, and there he is. It's just so remarkable. We'll have to have you back because clearly the story is not over. The case is not over. Um, when they clear, if they clear him from any uh, continuing you know, litigation, I'd love to have you back. And then when we start to find out if maybe there's going to be another prosecution of someone else. Thank you, guys. Thank you for everything you've done. Thank you. Thank you for watching.
Go to NewsNationNow.com to find NewsNation on your television provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of NewsNation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.